I want to respond to this comment in the chat as we transition. Um, I legit think SoFi is trash. Like there's nothing exciting about it. They're just repackaging a better FinTech app than most banks already offer. My argument still stands. TD app offers all of this already. They go on to say, and let's not pretend TD can't afford to just make a better FinTech app. TD is profitable and shits money already. Why bet on SoFi becoming that? Even at $5, they are trading expensively. Uh, so if I could take this really quick. So first off, one, TD's not offering you 3% interest rates in your savings accounts. They're not. Uh, they can afford it, but their dividend would get punished by that. So it the, the funny thing with, fin, with, with finance companies is because they're just dealing with percentages of dollars, they can't offer you a better rate because that means that whether you have $100 million or $100 trillion, if you offer a 1% increase, you're going to be hurt equally. So if, if they're pricing in a certain payout ratio for their dividend, and then you're saying, oh, well, they're going to be less profitable this quarter because they're going to try to build out this app. And they want to build it out aggressively. So we hired extra engineers to try to get this done. Or we acquired a company that's quite similar. Well, that, that quarter is not going to be a good quarter. And a lot of these investors don't want to see a bad performing quarter. It's, it's honestly a little bit of a problem with public companies is that they're kind of looked at on an annual or even quarterly basis versus just building out the best product. And I think this is sort of what, you know, I think SoFi is doing what Tesla did before that. And then what Amazon did before that is they're going, you know what? We don't care. We're trying to build the best product. Don't worry about the stock-based compensation. Don't, don't worry about all these other things. Let's just build the best product and the profits will come later. And, and Chris Hager, the guy that we had on last week, says, says this all the time. I love it. Unprofitable does not mean uninvestable, right? You're just getting earlier into the business than what would originally already happen. TD at one point, as they were trying to grow the business very like uh, very quickly, was unprofitable at some point while they were trying to build out their new company. Now that they have the you know the the ball rolling, now they actually have something that that you know value investors might want. But it's the same argument that you could say about oh why can, why can't a TD bank or any of these fintech companies go after PayPal? Why can't they go after all these other fintech companies that have came before them that are now surpassing them in market cap? Well, because they, they, they're they not seeing the true picture at the end of the line, or they're realizing that the, the CEOs here are 75 years old, and they're going, well, for my career, it's not going to be a problem, so I'm not going to have to worry about it. Let's just make sure the dividends keep getting pulled out, and I can make sure my retirement plan is set. And they're and dinosaurs, man. Dinosaurs. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And also, if you think any bank in America is good at banking, you're wrong. America is like last place in the entire world where banking is like the slowest. It's, it's just the most friction everywhere in the world. It, like every other country in the world is doing a better job than America on, on, on banking fintech like technology. And SoFi knows this. Like they, they uh, not Galileo, but uh, Technesis, Technesis um, has literally done a ton of banking tech like in um, South America and th th they structured it in a way that they can, they can provide value in the next 20 to 30 years. And that's the reason why we, we, we put them under our wing because they're, they're, they're built in a way that's going to be super relevant here in the near future. Um, all of the tech in, in America is like super old and they're all going to be moving off of their platforms here in the next five years um, five to 10 years. It, it depends on which type of bank and, and how old your tech is. But yeah, no matter what, SoFi is building the largest net that they can possibly build to capture all the people that are going to be moving into the future of, uh, of banking technology. And it's going to happen regardless, because if we don't do it, we're going to be left behind in the dirt and America's going to like be so far behind. And I don't know. There's a there's a ton of regulations right now that are are pushing in that general direction towards open banking and and SoFi is just trying to build a big net to capture all those people moving. And uh, if if I could also add, I, I don't want this. A lot of people are like, "Why is this our guy here?" I mean, like, but honestly, a, a lot of it is is great, right? I want a little bit of pushback that way I can give an answer to the questions that maybe a lot of people are having, right? And whenever it comes to fintech companies, well, what is the difference between any of these wealth fronts to a Robin Hood to, you know, another company that can offer you to buy stocks. It's very, very marginal things, very small details that make these companies very different and attract a lot of users. And in the case of a, a Square or Block now, right, a cash app to a Robin Hood to a SoFi, it's really the, the fun, cool aspect of, of, of this. And I think millennials and Gen Z's especially really aspire to have a banking app that 
is sort of, you know, not not the old Bank of Americas and Chase Banks and such. That's why you see that, you know, the cash apps at the top of the uh, charts all the time on, on you know, um, iOS or, or Google Play stores is because people want to bank with with an app that maybe understands them a little bit better. And and personally, like like Anthony Nota says, our biggest, you know, sort of moat is the fact that we offer everything all under one roof. And Anthony Nota has been saying this. All these CEOs say, oh, well, we're going to be doing that soon. Okay. He goes, yeah, that's been happening for the last four years. No one else has been able to replicate it. And the truth is, is that bank charters are extremely hard to get and supposedly going to be a lot harder going into the future. And the lending platforms are extremely, extremely hard to build out. This is why all of them have these stock brokerage apps, but not a lot of them have lending platforms because they're very, very hard, but they will soon with Galileo because that stuff's going to get built out. But yeah. And admit, sorry, admit, you know this better than anybody. Data is the future. And SoFi is like, is going to be optimized for bringing in the most rich amount of data compared to all these other, these other bank bank apps that are being structured from the bottom up. Like SoFi is trying to be like as big as platform as possible and then build on top of it. And we're going to be able to capture so much more data. There's a reason like why, like they're hiring machine data scientists, uh, machine learning for, uh, they're, they're hiring data scientists for machine learning on the relay app. Like you see that they, they have never taken down that, uh, uh, that, uh, job the job off. offer yeah yeah i mean data is the future data personalization is also the future and i think i agree a lot with what tanner is saying like the reason td bank wouldn't do this is because they should have done this so far shouldn't have even got to this point where they're growing the users and 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 the uh, financial products that they're able to cross sell and upsell to those users like now they're actually creating an integrated ecosystem it's not the biggest in the world but the growth rate is pretty phenomenal and they shouldn't be here i mean like any ceo could have seen this writing on the wall five years ago when they started to sort of venture into the space um, and they just let it happen. And that's probably because during the COVID crisis to totally reshift JP Morgan, Bank of America, like COVID was actually the best thing I think for SoFi, even though the student loans didn't uh, pan out that well, because all the big banks had to make sure that they could protect their bottom line to uh, protect shareholder value. There was no reorganizing of the business to stop this monster that might be glooming in the background. And during that time, SoFi just kept, you know, put it working harder, kept doing different things. They acquired Galileo in April, 2020, and no one really saw that coming. So it, it would be hard to imagine a TD bank immediately just does what SoFi does from the data consumer personalization perspective and launches a brand new app inside of them. And and the truth is that I think, I think these big banks are pivoting. Like you see branches closing down quarterly. They're, they're, they're not opening up, you know, nearly as much as they used to. They are net decreasing branches. They're, they are going digital, but these are massive cruise ship practically that see the iceberg ahead and are trying to turn, but they have to do it so slowly to not, you know, sort of try great to- Great point. Panic. Titanic and, is a great point. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and so really what they should have done is bought SoFi before we even went in public back in 2017, you know, back whenever all that cons uh, controversy was happening with our original CEO. Um, and they didn't. And you, you don't think a single bank uh, or, or any of these companies would have wanted to purchase SoFi back then to, to get what was, you know, 600,000 users up to, you know, four or 5 million users that we are today. I don't even remember what we are anymore. It's, it's changing every quarter. I mean, like every company, but it's, still like, like that growth is worth something. And, and people want to make it out to be like, anyone could do it. No, who, who even wants 5 million users, you know? It's the same argument that people are having with regards to like the traditional ice manufacturers going EV. They have to spend so much to rejig their entire manufacturing process to handle that. And so like TD, you know, has never really felt the need to innovate because their customers have never really seen an alternative. Yeah. But SoFi has like that connect. I, I saw another comment that said like, okay, what does SoFi have that's unique? Well, it's not necessarily the individual streams that are so unique from different competitors. It's the fact that it's all under one roof. And that's the one thing. And the second thing is that Galileo can offer everything that's white, la white labeled. Um, and when you put those things together, that kind of innovation is the reason that SoFi is having that growth. And you got to keep in mind, SoFi is only like under 10 million users right now. I mean, they're like what under 5 million users right now, yeah. 4.6, right? So um, they're super, super, super small in the comparison. So 
when you put all of those things together, I think that TD, like Tanner said, they're just focused on dividends right now because dividends are the only thing that those companies have to compensate for the, their lack of growth, their lack of innovation in order to keep their shareholders because shareholders stay for the good dividends because those underlying companies are not growing as fast. They're laggards, right? They're, they're, they're very stagnant. Whereas a company like SoFi, they can command 70% growth rates and they have that innovation. And just a matter of time, I think, between, before all of those different pieces of their business start to have this like well-oiled machine that the business altogether as a brand um, will start to see value for users much in advance of what TD has or what JP Morgan has as a standalone product offering because of that connectivity among their streams. Yeah, we're, we're super early. Like, uh, like Tanner said in one of his most recent YouTube videos, it's like there, there's going to be a huge partnership with SoFi here in the near future. We don't know, but like they're in the talks with like a big partnership pretty soon, and and that would get us on the roadmap. And also, like SoFi is like unproven. Nobody, everybody knows what they're trying to do, but nobody has like that proven story like Palantir has with Tyson Foods. You know, like. We, we're not there yet. We need we need social proof and we don't have that yet. But um, all the signs look like it's pointing in that general direction. Yeah. And, and if, if you want to say that there's no innovation, like like some are saying in the in the chat, I mean, one guy, but um, like the idea is like, OK, if we look at a Stripe or, uh, you know, a Visa, MasterCard, something like this, where you go, OK, well, they already have payment processing. So what is what is SoFi doing differently? Right. Oh, there's other companies that will do banking cores. What are they doing differently? Oh, well, there's other companies that will lend you out money. What are they doing differently? It's like, okay, but those are all separate companies. Those are all different businesses. This is one business that is offering you the, all those things and they work together. That's the really exciting part is, okay, we will build you the bank for you. Okay, we'll actually build the software and then we will offer you the payment processing everything through the bank, the direct deposits, all the, you know, ACH payments, all of the credit payments, everything. We'll offer all of it to you. And then we'll say, okay, we'll even host the money for you. And then we'll even help you with other things like, um, you know, uh, setting up other things like buy now, pay later and other special unique sort of products that will all be through SoFi. And that is really, really exciting. And no one else does that. That's what we offer. That's unique. No one else can offer you all those three things in tandem. And we will give a big discount because we want those clients. And where else are you going to go?